welcome back to my channel. I'm James, and today we're going to deep dive into this new 4K Ultra HD release from Kino Lorber of In Bruges. Now, this is one of those that I'm going to dive into and show you the exclusive 4K versus the original Blu-ray image comparisons. I'm going to share all my exclusive testing data, and then at the end, I always wrap it up with my review score to let you know how this compares to all the hundreds of other 4Ks I've exclusively tested over the years here on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you never miss out on any of these early or exclusive reviews that you're only going to find here on my YouTube channel. Now this review should be coming out roughly about a week before the release date. I got this in about a week and a half early from Kino Lorber and big shout out to Kino Lorber. They sent this to me early for review so I could get all the testing data done for all of you to release this here early before the release date. So that way you know whether this is something you're going to want to buy and add to your collections. But big shout out to Kino Lorber for sending this to me early for review. But as always just because something sent to me for review it never affects my review score now to start off with here i'm going to show you the original native image off of the blu-ray discs that had come out before from universal now keep in mind on these original images these are always the native images pulled from the discs as i've talked about thousands of times here on my youtube channel so just because your tv might be able to pump up the color saturation or things like that that doesn't mean that's actually the image that's present on the disc your tv can do a lot of things unnaturally to change the image and how it looks so what you see up here is always the native images on both the Blu-ray and the 4Ks that you're going to see in these image presentations. Now, the original Blu-ray release of In Bruges was very, 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 very soft. It had a lot of issues. There were some DNR in it. It had some blocking in it. It had some black crush. Um, and there's a lot of it having to do from the original source material, which I'm going to get to here in just a little bit. But basically the original blu-ray was not amazing it was entertaining for a movie it looked decent but it was just it was never an amazing reference quality blu-ray to begin with now in comparison to the new 4k ultra hd release from kino lorber it does have some nice improvements to it though when i went through all my testing there is some things i discovered that kind of affect a lot of what you're going to see and they're limited a lot by the original source material that i was referencing that that blu-ray is from now, if after you get done watching this review and hearing my review score, you decide you want to buy the In Bruges 4K Ultra HD release, I put the links for it directly from Amazon in the comment section and in the description section right below. You click on those, it takes you straight out to Amazon. I've made it nice and easy for you. And that's at no extra charge to you. It's on sale for the same price as everywhere, but that does help to support this YouTube channel just a tiny bit. So if you decide after watching my review, you do decide you want to pick up and buy this, please make sure to click through those links down below in the description section or as a pinned comment in the comment section below. Now talking about the image on this, now this is where there's a lot of things that I kind of found out when diving into this a little more. Basically the original source material is a 2K digital intermediate. So basically they're limited by them taking that 2K digital intermediate and then upscaling it to 4K. So this is an upscale from 2K to 4K. So that affects the image you're going to see in the first place. Then on top of that, because the original 2K Digital Intermediate was never an amazing reference source material to begin with, there was a lot of inherent issues like numerous scenes throughout the movie are still semi-soft where, yeah, you can see the film grain more. The film grain is a little bit more present in this than it was on the Blu-ray. But there is still some scenes where it does go very soft and then it goes back to a nice looking image, then a little bit soft and things like that. But that's also because there's only so much that Kino Lorber could do with this because they're working from the original source material that again is a 2K digital intermediate. So again, there was limitations there, but it went a little bit farther than that. Basically, there is still quite a bit of black crush throughout it. Now on the Blu-ray, it was more or less, I'd call it kind of a grayish crush, but it in those softer scenes would have crush in the darker scenes at night and things like that. Well, they're still present on this, but somehow it looks a little bit more black crushy. It's just, it, it's darker in a lot of those scenes where you really have to squint almost to make out some of what's in it. Now, it's not throughout the entire movie, but though there is scenes throughout it that you do still have, and they're a little bit more present, the black crush on it. So 
Keep that in mind, it's not necessarily that it's just a horrible release, I don't want you to give you the wrong idea there, which will get to my review score later on, which will kind of sum it up for you, but I'm just trying to point out all the things that I did discover when I went through it, that it's not Kino Lorber's fault, it's that Universal only has so much available for the source material, that there's only so much Kino Lorber can do with it, with the restoration, remaster, whatever they do on it, you can't make something that doesn't exist make it look absolutely amazing when the original source material was limited in the first place. Now this does get a brand new color grading that was approved by the original cinematographer. And the new color grading, as you've noticed above in those comparison screenshots, does look quite a bit better. And so like the daytime scenes, they look really good on this release versus the original Blu-ray release. So that is a nice improvement. So that's where I said it's levels of improvement you get on this that you just have to go into it with the right expectation. So that way you don't get so blown out with this expectation, expecting it to be something like, you know, I talked about on the recent Poltergeist or the recent The Lost Boys that I recently reviewed. Both of those were just absolutely outstanding releases. Well, this one, they don't have source material like what Warner Brothers had to work on with Poltergeist or The Lost Boys. So the source material, because it's so limited, they can only work so many miracles with it on this 4K. Now the Dolby Vision and HDR10 presentations, both of them were very similar looking between both of them. I didn't notice anything that stood out between one or the other that made one look out drastically better than the other. So in that case, both the HDR10 or Dolby Vision, no matter what you have to watch it on, whether you're watching it on HDR10 or Dolby Vision, they had similar looks between both of them. And they both had the same instances of like Black Crush or the softer scenes. Those are present on both of them no matter what. Now, Kino Lorber did keep the original aspect ratio of 2.39 to 1. They didn't change it down or cut it down at all. Audio mix wise, we do get an English DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 and a 2.0 stereo lossless mix. So I did like that we got two different audio mixes on it and the English DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 was the one I preferred. But talking about the audio mix, that's another downside. Basically, I did feel like the audio mix could have used a whole brand new restoration and remaster. If you remember watching the original Blu-ray, there was numerous scenes throughout the original Blu-ray where literally you had to constantly turn it up, turn it down, turn it up, turn it down. Where like Colin Farrell's character in it, he would talk and it'd be really quiet. And then the next scene, it'd be really loud where he's talking really loud. So you'd like turn it down because you Obviously it was so loud and then you turn it way back up because you really couldn't understand or hear him. Well, the bad news is that's still present on the 4K Ultra HD release. I really had a hard time and I'd forgotten how hard of a time the audio mix on it was going up and down constantly. And I was watching it at night sitting there and I don't like to have it so loud at night, you know, when it's really late at night. So I like to have it where, you know, you can hear it just fine, but it's not one of those things where it's blowing you away. Well, I had it sitting there and I literally couldn't hear anything, so I turned it way up so I could start to hear what they were saying. The very next scene, like a second later, it sounded like they were yelling at me, that's how loud it was. So I had to turn it way back down and then turn it way back up. And that's where I feel like for audio mix wise, it could have used a bunch of work on the audio mix. But again, talking about the Blu-ray, same thing was very similarly present on the Blu-ray. So it could have used a brand new restoration for the audio mix, but because of this film just not being as huge or massive of a film as a lot of movies that are out there that have made billions of dollars, I think that's where it's a more limited audience that In Bridges is getting, that it's kind of one of those things that there's only a limited amount of people, so they're only gonna spend so much time with the source material. And it does look good in certain areas, it's just the sound, I really, really didn't enjoy the sound mix on it that much at all. Now In Bruges, kind of to give you a sum up of the movie, it's kind of one of those movies, it's a dark drama, kind of like a black comedy about basically two assassins or hitmen, however you want to call it. And it's kind of one of their like day in the life of them going through, you know, a couple of days and um, a job they're on and things they discover and emotional issues they have. And I mean, there's good acting in it. I mean, Colin Farrell's great in it. Brendan Gleeson's good in it. And it's one of those things that it's their interactions together that really sell the film and the script's good in it. Though I will warn you, it is rated R for very strong language and violence. And I'll warn you on that right off the bat, if you're not into language in films, there is a ton of language in it. Literally like, it's not like one of those that every other word, but there is a lot of language in it. So just keep that in mind when you go into it. Now showing you what you get in this, you do get this nice slip cover. I really do like getting these in the first pressings from Kino Lorber because they do come with slip covers because I do like that the slip cover comes with it. Now on the side, obviously it matches all of Kino Lorber's 4K releases. So it looks nice on your bookcase when you have the slip covers. 
Then on the back here, it talks about it. It does have all your special features listed out on here. It does talk about that it's rated R and it does talk about the release. It is 107 minutes and the movie did come out originally in 2008. Now when you get inside it, you do have reversible cover artwork. So I do like that Kino Lorber is doing that more and more. They're giving us two different options for the cover artwork, whichever we want. So this is the reversible one that's on the inside or you can have this one. Now I always put them so they're different on each one. So I take one out and have different options. But I do like that it does have reversible cover artwork on it. It just adds to the collection ability of it. Now when you get inside here, you do have your 4K Ultra HD disc. It is region free. Then you have your Blu-ray disc. This is region A locked. As always, I exclusively test everything on all of my region A, B, C, multi-region, and region free players. And the Blu-ray disc is region A locked. So those of you that are watching this from around the world, if you do want to import this through that link I have listed from Amazon down in the description section right below, Keep in mind, you will need a multi-free or region-free player that I've talked about on this YouTube channel a lot. You will need that to access the Blu-ray disc. Otherwise, your 4K Ultra HD disc is region-free. Now, for those of us that really live in region A territories, we'll have no issues playing any of these discs, obviously, because it's region A anyways, and that's what it's locked to. Now, I did enjoy the film. I do think it's one of those kind of acquired taste films that if you've never seen the film, You'll kind of watch it the first time, maybe have a weird or not think, oh, it's the most amazing film I've seen, or you might love it the first time. But it was kind of one of those things, the first time I saw it, I was like intrigued, eh, it was kind of good. Second time I watched it, you kind of notice more things because it is kind of one of those black, dark comedies that you kind of grows on you the more you see it. You kind of get more of the dialogue, more of the like comedy behind it and things like that, that kind of are like a dark sense of life, how they look at it because they're hitmen or assassins. But as far as this 4K Ultra HD release goes, there was a nice image present through a lot of it. Um, it just does have those issues that I talked about. And I wish that there would have been a brand new 4K scan from the original camera negatives or things like that if that was available. It's simply not. Basically they got a 2K DI to work with. And again, there was limitations on that 2K. So again, that's still inherent on these 4K. And some of them, like I said, the Black Crush, come out a little bit more and are a little bit more present now that you notice them even more so than maybe you did as much on the Blu-ray. But if you're a fan of the film, my review score for this is a fair 7.8. It's a fair release. I mean, it, it's good, it's not amazing, it's not outstanding, it's not gonna knock your socks off. It's one of those that if you're a fan of the film, you wanna see it the best way that it's ever really gonna be released, this is it. Um, I don't ever see us getting this in anything other than this release. And I'm surprised it even came out on this, to be honest with you. Like I said, I kind of felt like it was a smaller, I don't know if I want to call it indie movie, but it was a smaller release of a movie. A lot of people hadn't heard of it, hadn't seen it, didn't know about it. So that's where I'm really surprised we even got this on 4K, but it is a nice 4K. Um, just keep in mind, I always will be honest and upfront with all of you. And that's where in this, you gotta temper your expectations. Do not expect it to be one of these that blows your socks off, otherwise you will be disappointed. It's just a fair release. It's good, it looks better than the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray had so many limitations and so many issues, and I mean, the Blu-ray was just not a great release anyways, that it does have improvements over that Blu-ray, obviously. Uh, obviously, like I said, the daytime scenes, that's where you see a lot of the really big improvements and it looks really good in those daytime scenes. It's just the nighttime and a lot of those areas where it gets really dark or the fluctuations, things like that, that's where you have those basically inconsistencies. So again, Kino Lorber did the best they could. It's not their fault. It's simply they're working with what they have available. So it gets a fair 7.8. Make sure to start the conversation in the comment section below. Let me know if you've seen this film. I'm always curious when I do a lot of these kind of like unknown films, like how many of you have actually seen the film? Tell me if you liked the film, if you loved the film, if you're excited to buy this, if you're thrilled that it's on 4K. I mean, it is one of those I'm glad to have it in my collection. I collect all of Kino Lorber's 4K releases. So I wouldn't not want to have it, but that's kind of my collector side of it. So that's why when I do these reviews, I have to kind of take my collector side out of it and look at it from an objective standpoint as, hey, how does it compare to all the other releases that have come out? And that's where that 7.8 came from. When I went down to the nitty gritty of sitting down and going through image and audio and everything else, I mean, it's a 7.8. And uh, it is one of those that if you're a collector, you'll wanna add this to your collection. Now I have put the links for this down in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. So make sure if you decide you're gonna pick this up or buy this, 
Make sure to click through those links down below. That does help to support this YouTube channel just a tiny bit, but it doesn't cost you a dime extra and it's on sale for the same prices everywhere. That Amazon link takes you straight out there and I made it nice and easy for you. Now, if you enjoy all of the hard work I put behind all this content, like I've talked about recently, I've been bringing tons of extra content to all of you weekly and it's hard for me to keep this pace up because I'm exhausted, but I'm doing all of this for all of you. If you enjoy all my hard work and you want to help to support this YouTube channel so I can continue to do this, make sure to join my VIP Collectors Club. That is the best way possible to support this YouTube channel. And that money goes straight back into this YouTube channel and costs you less than the price of a cup of coffee each month, but it makes a world of difference to me in the creation of these videos. And that's how I'm able to keep producing this content. It's very expensive and time consuming, as most of you know, taking me anywhere between three to four days to create every single one of these exclusive comparison videos. So if you enjoy these, make sure to join my VIP Collectors Club or give a super thanks to the super thanks button down below. It's just like a tip. It allows you to give a tip of any amount, any dollar, two dollars, things here and there drastically does help this YouTube channel. So please make sure to join my VIP Collectors Club. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and a like for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. As always, I hope all of you truly have a blessed day. And I've always got something new and exciting coming out very soon.